They were cursed of God. And as a result, His protection was not on their land. And as a result, the devourer came and plundered them. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And God didn't bless the vine of the field. Could you pray over your tomato plants and ask God to bless them? You should, if you want to have good tomatoes. Seriously. Man, I know people who say, well, you know, I just prayed, and the Lord just gave me an abundant harvest. Seems, you know, zucchini. Tomatoes, squash, cucumbers. Friend, God can bless anything. And He can curse anything. He cursed the ground that belonged to this nation that was their inheritance. And as well as cursing it, there was no blessing on the vines and they just... What would happen would be before you could come in and uh, harvest from them, before all their grapes were ripe, half of them had already ripened and fallen to the ground, come in and start shaking them up, you're going to destroy the new ones. And God says, I'll make them all come ripe at the same time so you can harvest them all and have no lack, have no waste. You ever feel like you just can't ever get ahead because every time something happens, just to take even more from you? That's what is happening here. All the nations shall call you blessed. The third promise of, or a second promise of blessing here. All the nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. And God says, everybody's going to look at you and they're going to call you blessed. I think here's the application for the days of King Solomon when individuals who had not even been conquered by the, uh, the if you would want to call it the empire of the nation of Israel, but the nation of Israel was putting people in subjection and taxing them, making them pay tribute. And individuals came to Solomon and said, Solomon, we'd like to pay tribute to you. He didn't have to conquer them. He didn't have to fight wars. They said, we'd like to pay you some tribute and have you govern over us. And this is the same principle that is here. You honor God and other people will see that blessing. They don't want to just come be under and around it. They'll call you blessed. We want to work for somebody like you. We want to hire people like you. God's blessings on you. All right. We're out of time. I'm very sorry about that. Let's look down at verse uh, 13. Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. This, is, this ought to just break your heart. Yet you say, what have we spoken so much against thee? I just want to read through this and maybe do just a tiny bit of explanation. I want you to think about it. Ye have said it is vain to serve God. Ye have said it is vain to serve God. What does vain mean? There's no use. There's no use serving God. What profit is it that we have kept His ordinance, and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? I can think of individuals that have said, I do right, but there's no use. And it's not worth it. What profit is it that we have kept His ordinance? You know what? I did right, and it wasn't worth it. I want to tell you something. You're a liar if you say that. First of all, it's not vain to serve God. And secondly, you're lying about keeping His ordinance as well. You may have come into compliance for a day or two, but you have a heart's attitude of rebellion against God Almighty and His laws. And this nation that says, well, we could keep God's law and His ordinance, but it's no use. Can I interpret it another way? Pastor, in the day and age we live, if we tried to obey the Bible, it wouldn't work. I mean, don't you know? Don't you know how wicked this world is? Have you have you been out and looked around? Don't you know about sin and how rampant it is and how the wicked people are in power? Don't you know? Ye have said it is in vain to serve God. careful about that. God said, I have got some... He says, you've said things against me. Friend, when you say that there's no use to try to live righteously in this day and age, God says you've spoken stout words against Him. Stout's another word for very strong or very 
able to withstand or attack. In other words, if you get in a stick fight, you want a stout pole. Right? You want something that can hold up and really give a good whack. You get somebody to move furniture, you want a stout person. Somebody that is strong and able to do it easily. And God said, you've spoken some strong words against me. Strong words. And you've said that it's a waste. It's useless to do righteousness. And what profit is that we've kept His ordinance and that we walk mournfully before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the proud happy. Pastor, all the people that are doing well, they're not doing right. At my work, you, you're telling me that God wants me at my job to be honest. They'll fire me. You tell me in my job that, that I can stand up for things that I believe are Bible convictions? It's illegal. Yeah, you're right. It's useless to try to do right. Stout words against God, aren't they? Pastor, I can't do right. Pastor, you know what? If I did that, you know, it's the wicked people that have everything. They're the ones that are making it in this world. It's because they know how things actually are. Hey, they wrote the system, and if you buck the system, buddy, you don't make it. Don't you know? You've spoken stout words against God. And now we call the proud happy. Yea, that work, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. And you have made an excuse for wickedness. What's the use of speaking out against sin? Okay, you go ahead and believe that God Almighty can't protect His people and can't bless righteousness. And you'll get what we have. You hear what I said? You go ahead and believe that God's people can't stand up for righteousness and against wickedness, and you'll get what we have. You'll have the wicked in high places. You'll have ungodliness chasing righteousness into the corners. You'll have dark, squelch, squelching light. If you want to speak stout words against God, but friend, can I tell you something about the God that you serve? He's the same God the nation of Israel had. And if you do righteousness, God will bless it. And it is not in vain to serve God. And if you think it is, you've taken that up with God. Christian, be righteous, be holy, and be unabashed. Be unafraid. Hey, don't think that the wicked are set up so much that the righteous can't be what He's called by God Almighty to be. You be what God wants you to be, and you see, you prove God, and find out if He is able to deliver you. God's never judged the righteous. God's never judged the righteous. Yeah, I challenge you to find me a place in Scripture where God has ever judged the righteous. Find it and show it to me. It's not in the Scripture. You say, what about Job? God bless Job. And Job said so. Job said so. God's never judged the righteous. And He'll bless you if you do right. Friend, if you don't do right, think what you're saying about your God. Think what your heart's attitude is. Do righteousness. Do righteousness and trust God to take care of you. Listen, this little nation of Israel, they didn't have the wherewithal to bring tithes. They were taxed so heavily by wicked governments, they had nothing for themselves. And God said, prove me now herewith whether I will open heaven and pour out a blessing. Friend, I want to say something to you. You can't do anything in your strength. You want to give and make sure that God's house is full. Listen, if you're waiting until you have the ability to do it, you'll never do it. You can forget about it. It'll never happen. But you prove God and find out if He is not what He says He is in His Word. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 talks about He that had gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. Friend, I want to tell you something. God's people never have lack. They always have what they need. And it's true about Him. His Word says so. And if you believe it, He'll bless you. Heavenly Father, help us to believe Your Word, we pray in Christ's name, for His sake. Amen. Amen. Alright, let's go ahead and take some... Uh, some